So the wonderful people over at iX Systems sent us this. This is a free NAS Mini XL. This is a demo unit we have, which unfortunately I have to return. But we did some testing with it. Uh, we've been using it some, having some fun, and I really like this box. Now, first thing is, it's solid, it's heavy, it's well-made, um, and it looks really cool. Also, really quiet. We're gonna get to uh, some of that. So I'll turn it on for you and kind of get you an idea, but that's something that's hard to really convey. I don't have a nice fancy decibel meter, but I can tell you, um, even having this on sitting next to it, it's really, really silent. They did a nice job with the fan design. And I like that because this has a different use case. I mean, you probably aren't going to see this model in a data center. This is more like what you're gonna see in a small office. Um, and a lot of those small offices don't always have a dedicated IT room where they put all the gear. Uh, even when you do, it's nice walking in and not being as loud. And we have a lot of small businesses that work out of their home, like designers that have just maybe one or two workstations. This is a great setup for something like that as well, where you need a lot of the power, but you go, hey, my office doesn't need to be, you know, roaring with fan noise. I kind of have cold, uh, calls to take and things like that. Um, I didn't do an unboxing of it. We wanted to get right into using it, but I will tell you that it comes, like the way the packaging is on this, very solid. Like this, this sits on top, Oop. and uh, put it in the door on. Yeah, it's when you can see the amount of protection, they've got plenty of protection. When they ship this to you, the box is actually kind of bigger than my camera zoomed out. And I'm like, eh. I'll just say it comes really well packaged. And yes, the drives come really well packaged as well. And they're on these trays. So we have eight hard drives here. We're going to pop one out. We'll slide a drive out. And when they come, they uh, have static wrap that I have off to the side here. I don't feel like making crinkling noises. Uh, but they ship all the drives wrapped in nice little IX Systems uh, bags. They're cute. And the drives are all set down in here. So everything's nice, well packaged, but uh, I didn't do the full unboxing. It's not that exciting, I don't think. But maybe I'm wrong. And if you guys tell me next time do an unboxing video in detail, let me know. Then we have a power cord, which we left in the bag and they give you a network cable. We have our own power cords. It's standard. You'll see when we go through the hardware on this and there is a key. Now, obviously the key will, if it, this is a nice front, but obviously if someone was really determined they're going to crack it off, but it does keep the kids out of it from uh, popping the drives out. Plus the drives themselves have the little turn spot on them to allow you to twist lock. So you can't just eject it like that. But these are really well made. Everything's really nice and solid. And we have Western Digital 4TB Red NAS drives in here. Now there's always the debate of which drives you should use. The reason you use NAS drives is they are generally engineered to be lower power and for rate arrays and lower heat. So you don't want to, even though it has plenty of fans and it's got good air flow, you don't want any more heat than you need, especially when you're stacking all these drives on top. Now the Mini XL Plus has, if you didn't see it at the top, we do have one more drive that's another hot swap at the top that you can dedicate as a uh, Zill drive or as a write cache, your leisure, whichever you want to choose. And when we get inside here, you'll see some of the other components of it in terms of uh, you have more spots inside to mount drives. So let's go ahead and open it up. Side covers are just held on with some thumb screws, pop right off. They're, like I said, everything's well made. It's not going to cut you on the edges. I think we're over that. I, maybe I'm thinking about it because of my older age of dealing with old cases uh, in early days of computers. They didn't roll the edges or anything. Uh, they made them and uh, they, you could use them as a razor blade on the side. All the, the case is really well made and solid. Turn it and slide the other side off so both sides come off for convenience. So yay. And they're symmetrical so uh, we should be able to do this. I, I like that so you don't have to remember which way you set it. All right, let's dig inside. All right, so we'll let's take a look from the front. And we can see all the drives pretty clear here. We have the power button, a recessed reset button, power on light, hard drive activity light, network card one, network on two. And like I said, the drives pop out really easy. Pretty simple mechanism here and they're all labeled. And the same thing with the one up here. Now here's the other drive we have mounted inside of here and space for one more. 
Uh, you can see the back plane that controls all the drives is all standard SATA, but it does have a special connector on the board, so it's like an expander to come on there. So it's not a bunch of individual SATA cables for the eight drives, but there is an individual SATA cable for this one, an individual SATA cable that's up here for our front drive, and still one more empty spot for to put one more two and a half inch drive right here. You can see the active CPUs has a fan on it, active cooled -cool CPU. Then back over here, there is a cooler for the 10 gig network interfaces. I believe that sh should be the 10 gig chip that's under there. Um, and this is a PCIe, and you'll see that when we flip over to the back. Uh, so you can add another expansion card in here. And then we have the fans, two of them mounted in the very front here with the rubber dampers on them. Of course, we want to make sure that things quiet. So the fans, this, you know, minimizes the vibration uh, while still maximizing airflow. And on the other side, a very accessible power supply if you ever need to change it out. And standard ATX power connector, nothing too strange here. Uh, if you ever need to put something different in there, not a problem. You have two USBs in the back, IPMI, the two 10 gig connections and it does have VGA on the back but that's really not necessary because you can see everything from the IPMI we're going to jump to the software on that in a minute and speaking of USB I didn't mention it but we do have the two USB up in the front one standard USB and one USB 3. so plenty of USB connections on here both front and back now one of the things I wanted to do here because uh, this is not as easy to do is tell you how quiet it is so i brought the mic in shot so you can see the mic is uh hopefully i didn't make too much noise right there next to it and we're going to plug it in with the case off so the case is open and then we're going to put the lid on it um you know to dampen the noise a little bit but you're going to get an idea just how quiet this is so there's the that's it I actually hear the hard drives in the uh, fans, but uh, they took some time to make sure it was really quiet. And I think I mentioned this, but like, if you're gonna use this in a small office where there's not a dedicated spot to put all your IT stuff, maybe this sits, you know, because uh, you're a creator and it sits in your general area. Well, this is gonna be quiet enough that not to disturb the piece and things like that. So it's only this loud with the case off. And when we put the case on, it gets that much quieter. Yeah, I don't know if you can really even pick much up on there. I'm looking at the levels and I hardly see it doing it. I don't have anything that's real accurate. I didn't feel like using just some app on my phone uh, to get the exact ambient noise, but ideally I'm talking next to this and obviously it's not louder than me. I can see that I'm picking uh, the meters way more than the minor amount of noise that this makes. And we spin it around like this. Um, now the noise is going back towards me because the more noise comes out of the back than the front. Maybe you hear the hard drive. I do like the blue lights though. Uh, it definitely looks really nice. All right, let's get into the software and talk about the details and the specs of the system. So I have this all set up and I moved it to the back of our building where I have a 10 gig connection. I just didn't feel like running a nice Cat 6A all the way to our studio. One day I will, different video, different project. Now this system has IPMI and I'll look it up on Wikipedia if you're not familiar with the Intelligent Platform Management Interface. But essentially this is uh, allows you to completely control the system, even view it's on the screen instead of plugging into an HDMI or VGA port or anything like that, you can view it there. So this does have a VGA port on the back of the board they put on here, but it's much nicer to be able to do it this way. And this is a nice feature that you don't get when you build it yourself, uh, unless you choose a higher end motherboard, which they have here. And especially uh, for clients, when we set this up, if we have to remote into something and they're going, hey, I can't connect. And if we're for some reason unable to get into the machine, this will allow us to power down, reset, uh, or you know, do whatever we need to do, or even see what's on there. So this is actually gonna be like a preview of what's on there, but let's jump right into remote control options and they have a HTML5 version, which is great. So I can actually get to the FreeNAS interface and see the IP address. I just thought this was a really nice 
a really nice feature so I can capture, pull up the virtual keyboard if I wanted to send something special commands to it. And previously, a lot of IPMI, especially if you dealt with the older ones on some of the other brands, um, they're not as great. It, IPMI has come a long way and the fact that an HTML5 interface means these are really easy over IP. So if you're VPN into another network remotely, you can still easily get to the interface. We can also see inside of here, we're going to be here, hardware information. And let's talk about the specs on the FreeNAS Mini XL Plus. So right away, we can see the system manufacturer, IAC Systems, FreeNAS Mini XL Plus. Like I said, they've customized and branded like the motherboard and everything on here. The CPU is a Intel Atom C3758 at 2.2 gigahertz. And for those of you that cringe when I said Atom, yes, I know Intel should change the name. The original Atoms uh, were not wonderful. The newer Atoms are actually quite fast and quite powerful and used a lot in uh, this type of device or devices that are enterprise that you want lower power consumption, but still want to have good power. They still make a great chip. I wish they would have changed the branding um, because it's just, Anyways, I won't ramble about that, but yes, it's the newer, better uh, Atom. Go ahead and read up on that processor model. As shipped to us, this does have a pair of 16 gig memories, 2400 megahertz. So uh, nice, fast memory in here. And here's all the specs. So uh, it's plenty powerful enough to run FreeNAS. You can run things in jails on it, virtualization. All of that works fine with this. Um, but these are the core specs of the machine itself. You can get sensor readings out of here. So we have, you know, the CPU temp and everything else. And you're getting this from the motherboard. So you could cross-reference if you ever had a sensor reading discrepancy for what you may have seen inside of FreeNAS. But yes, it's uh, directly from the motherboard. You can get all of this information for all sensors or narrow things down, fan speed sensors, just the voltages on there. I like the fact that this is all built in. This is really nice. And like I said, we have the remote control options and configurations. This even has different authentication and notification systems that you can have within here uh, so you can customize the network. So it is nice having an IPMI on these, especially when you want to manage things that are uh, you're managing remotely. This is great. So now you don't have to worry about how do I have a monitor next to it in case I ever have to troubleshoot it. No need for any of that. It does support having a CD-ROM image or other images loaded to it. Uh, I haven't really tested any of that, but um, if you wanted to, you'd be able to put in like a host and an image in here so you could even reload this remotely because you'd be able to see the screen and get the image on there. So for some reason, you need to reload or have some uh, catastrophe that you can't physically get to the machine necessarily or like us, we're helping a lot of clients remotely. That is completely an option with this. So I really like this whole interface on there. Now, once we get into the box itself, we are greeted with the traditional FreeNAS interface. You can see the setup that I have here. Uh, FreeNAS Mini XL Plus for running the latest version, 11.2 U5. Our processor is here. And also things like all the reporting and all that because FreeNAS uh, built this hardware, assembled this hardware, chose this hardware. No problem. It's all completely compatible. So you don't have to worry about that through any of the updates. As for the pool itself, I've set up a pretty simple uh, RAID Z2 and a setup, a healthy 20 gig setup here. So we got a, plenty of storage that we're doing the testing on. And I set up a NFS share with XCPNG. And you can get a little more detail. Here's our RAID Z2. Here's the data storage drives. We have a log drive, the Zill and the cache drive set up. So one is the one installed that is uh, at the top there and the other one is the one that's on the inside. So I guess there's plenty of expandability on this and you can support up to 100 terabytes if you got the larger 14 terabyte drive. So that's the biggest I think that's available right now as of July 2019. Uh, but obviously, you know, there's still room. There's uh, the standard supports higher. That's just what you can go buy right now. So uh, for such a small box, you can get quite a bit of storage in here. So we have the FreeNAS Mini XL connected at 10 gig RJ45. I've been doing a little bit of testing so you can see there's, you know, the 100 gig uh, connection. It's white and actually just like my computer's connected at hard gig and port 15. So I had no problems linking it up. And for those of you wondering, I'm using that thin cable uh, that is rated for CAT6. It's a short one because it's sitting in our back by the server room, but uh, no problems running 10 gig over that cable. And let's do a quick test just to show that it's working. So we'll drag this over here. So this is the FreeNAS Mini XL, and we have a 192.168.10.55 assigned to it. 
And we did that because I wanted to connect it to another free NAS box that is also running at 10 gig. So we're going to go ahead here. We're going to iperf 3-s for server. It's going to listen. And then we'll go down here at iperf 3 dash C for client, 192.168.10.55. Like I said, this is the second one. We have one is management, one is storage. So yes, the interface we were on was a 3.197. That's what I'm managing it on. And then we are tying the storage to the 10.55. And here we are at full 10 gig, no problem. 9.41 gigs a second with the overhead. Uh, so yes, it's routing and working perfectly fine at 10 gig. Uh, there's always seems to be people who question whether or not these devices will actually connect at 10 or they will just try to connect to 10. I don't know why that's always a debate. Uh, 10 gigabit is a standard. It's actually been real, around for a little while. Uh, no problem connecting at 10 gigabit there. Now in XCPNG, just as a quick test, I have the mini XL set up here. Um, as a storage device over NFS. Um, I didn't do any fine tuning. This is just kind of a quick test. I wanted to show uh, what happens when you load the machine up and do some heavy testing with it. And let's uh, log into that VM. And we'll do a quick kickoff with the Phronix test suite just so I can create some IO activity. So we'll do uh, option one, do some small write tests with option two, and then we'll do all test options. This will I don't care about saving results. This is just some, you know, bench testing. And by the way, before you get excited about it, there's uh, lies, damn lies, and benchmarks. So you get kind of, especially when you're dealing with layers of virtualization, uh, you're going to get some different numbers on here. So this is not to a thorough or exhaustive test. This is just to create some load on, show you what the load looks like on the system. So we're going to go over here to our services. And we do have net data turned on. I love that the, ever since they built this in uh, to FreeNAS, this is great. And now we're loading it up. So uh, we're seeing some disk writing going on here, hitting about the 300, which isn't bad. Uh, like I said, these are still spinning disks that we have in here. So you're going to get, and this is an aggregated number, you're going to get some different numbers in here uh, than you would if you would have went with a solid state system, which is always going to be substantially faster. But we can go over, over here, look at the IPv6 networking stack and see all the stats on here. Now well, let's actually jump to something more interesting like network interfaces. Here we go. And we can see the data on the bandwidth across here. Now this is different. This is where we did the test where you peek it out. These are the tests for moving data back and forth. But like I said, there's also going to be some overhead based on the system it's run, the VM it's in, um, and bringing it across the network. So you get this peak, you know, here we are saturating it versus when you are uh, not saturating it, just pulling some data back and forth. But it performs really well for this. Uh, this is still a really fast box. And we're not overloading the CPU running these tests. And by the way, they're still running right here. And you can watch this just going along. Actually, I got to change it to keep moving when it's unfocused. There we go. That way, this will keep going while this is going so you can keep the numbers moving. Like I said, I'm, these aren't thorough or exhaustive tests because there's a lot of specific parameters and it's going to vary with your use case on here. Uh, we'll probably do some more testing on it uh, before we send it back, but so far the performance has been really good on it. So I really do like the FreeNAS Mini XL. Uh, this is for the people that are probably already uh, typed these comments and are mashing those buttons down. Oh, we hit like 400 on the disk right now. Very cool. Um, this is not a build it versus buy it argument. For those of you that want a out of the box working free NAS where you jump right in and only have to set up the software and things like that, these are excellent buys. For those of you that want to uh, piece it together, it's a completely different debate. You can do that. Yes, I'm aware. Uh, which one's a better deal? For a lot of times, even if you end up spending a lot of money, a lot of people just want systems that work right out of the box, and this is that system. You get an excellent uh, free NAS operating system, which I've done a lot of videos on. I'm getting ready for my new 11.2 series of videos on it. Uh, you have all the jails and the plugins and all the cool features you get with free NAS, which is wonderful. And for those of you who don't want to spend, spend time tinkering, uh, you know, finding all the right hardware combinations for compatibility, Look no further, FreeNAS, their mini series is a really excellent, affordable way to build a really nice NAS system that is, uh, you know, right out of the box, get going with the latest version of FreeNAS and no worries about compatibility and a lot of expandability here. Uh, eight drives and two in the inside and one more hot swap on the top and 10 gig networks. No more sorting out drivers and trying to figure out which one to buy. This all works great right out of the box. Uh, we unboxed it, set it up. And like I said, we've had it running for a few days now of testing before I did this video. No problems at all. And of course, I did my usual abuse of free NAS, but 
as expected, unplugging it randomly and moving it around the office uh, has not managed to break a thing, not even the VMs running on it uh, or VMs running, the VM server running on it. I didn't test any of the actual VMs in it yet, but uh, we'll probably do a couple more tests before we have to send this thing back. Uh, but it has performed well. And I will admit, uh, we'll look at the ambient temperature real quick here. Go over here to server health, sensor readings. Uh, we are looking good here as far as temperature, system temp. Um, and this is sitting, you know, where it's already generally warm. I think the uh, temperature is about 78 degrees at the back of my office where the server is. Uh, let me convert that. So 78 Fahrenheit is going to be 25 uh, Celsius. And we're looking at a 45 system temp back there with all the drives in it and doing load testing. Uh, it never gets above that. It's not that hot, which is actually pretty good because 10 gig, by the way, if you aren't aware, is a heat producer. That's why if you look at any 10 gig cards, they always have either fans on them or large heat sinks uh, with the fans. So it's either a large passive heat sink or that. Uh, so there is with the case on, they have enough airflow that it's really not a problem. And like I said, it's really quiet. So not a problem to have it in your office. All right. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.